yonder window breaks. It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief that thou, her maid, art far more fair than she. Be not her maid, since she is envious. Her vestal livery is but sick and green, and none but fools do wear it. Cast it off! Oh, it is my lady! Oh, it is my mother! <laughs> Oh, if she knew she were. <laughs> she speaks, yet she says nothing. What of that? Her eye discourses. I will answer it. I am too bold. <laughs> <laughs> Answer for them. Who would these farthings bear to be light and sweat under a weary night but that the play of something after them? The undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others we know not of. Thus, conscience does make cowards of us all. And thus the native hue of resolution is sickly more than the pale cast of thought. And enterprise is a great pitch and moment. With this regard, the currents turn awry and lose the name of action. And therefore, since I cannot prove a lover to entertain these fair, well-spoken days, I am determined to prove a villain and hate the idle pleasures of these days. Plots have I laid, inductions dangerous, by drunken prophecies, libels, and dreams, to set my brother Clarence and the king in deadly hate, the one against the other. And if Edward be as true and virtuous as I am subtle, false, and treacherous, that this day should Clarence be closely mewed up by a prophecy which says that G of Edward's heirs, the murder shall be. Dive thoughts down to my soul. Here, Clarence comes. <laughs> 